Today, I start my lithium battery experiment. Yeah, with this uh, server rack battery. Who says these batteries are light? This one's 97 pounds. But it is very high capacity. Well, I got the paperwork uh, from FedEx. I'm ready to pick it up. The server racks have a bunch of advantages. They are designed as a high quality component for a, a solar system. As such, they have a very good BMS or battery monitoring uh, system, uh, which is good for 200 amps. They have an internal pre-charge resistor and an on-off switch, all in one case. Several of these units then can be combined uh, in case you need more capacity. This one battery may be able to run my air conditioner for two or three hours, but if I want more, I can just hook up another one right to it and plug them in together. I don't know if I'm gonna need that or not, but with this testing, I hope to find out that answer. Yeah, that sounds hot. I had to move to shade. Anyway, that brings us to what other changes need to make to your RV if you want to use lithium batteries. Uh, first one, of course, is the alternator. can no longer charge the lithium batteries directly. Uh, lithium batteries can pull a lot of power. So most people just get a DC to DC converter, and they do it that way. Next, your uh, solar uh, controller also needs to have a lithium setting. A lithium setting is usually about 14.6 volts. So fortunately, I did replace my uh, solar controller here, so it now has a lithium setting. So all I gotta do is reprogram it. And also your converter that charges your batteries when you're plugged in or running your generator. So you have to change that one to one that's compatible with lithium, 14.6 uh, volts. So uh, I did that. I got a, even got a higher power, 60 amp one, because the lithium batteries can accept a higher charging current. You're also probably going to lose the use of your battery boost switch. Most people just disconnect it. And lastly, if you have a trickle dart that's used to maintain the chassis battery, it doesn't have the right voltages for lithium. You have to get an amp L start, uh, and that has more capacity, but it also has a programmable so that you can set it for lithium batteries. For this test phase, I'm going to leave the uh, golf cart batteries in the step well, and they're going to be powering the 12 volt systems. So they'll be charged only by the alternator. That means I can leave the trickle start and the battery boost solenoid as it is. And I'm going to use the lithium only for AC current. So the lithium batteries will not be charged by the alternator. I'm only going to charge them by my solar cells and also by shore generator power. And during this testing stage, I'm going to be installing an AB switch so I can switch between the lithium batteries or the deep cell batteries, pretty much just for testing purposes. Normally the lithium batteries are at a higher voltage, so yeah, I could potentially charge the wet cell batteries with the lithium batteries, so anyway, we'll see. First thing to do is decide where am I going to put the battery. Uh, yeah, I considered this compartment here under the bed. It has some advantages because it's right near all the electrical, so everything would be together. Uh, and it'd be inside. However, I did decide to put them in the outside compartment. Uh, yeah, the server rack battery weighed 97 pounds and probably another 10 pounds of other stuff. So I think that'll be okay. I'll just put some plywood in and that'll distribute the force around so I can bolt everything down pretty easily. So yeah, let's get going. <sighs> Moving the Victron shot was pretty easy. I just removed two uh, mounting screws, took the leads off, uh, put it over here and screw it down to the plywood in front of the new lithium battery and reconnected it. I then replaced the converter that came with the unit. It was only for wet cells, didn't have a lithium option, so I got a bigger, more powerful one and installed it under the bed. The only job of the converter is to change 120 volt AC current into the 12 volt DC current. So uh, the new charger, or new converter, uh, puts out 14.6 volts, so it's good to go. It'll charge the batteries up fully. Uh, the new unit was actually a little bit bigger, but it's not as high, so it actually fit better under the compartment. Uh, and then I just added a six gauge wire uh, over to the uh, lithium batteries. Next up was to make new battery cables. I'm using two alt welding cable for most of the connections and these uh, crimp lugs. A double alt wire can handle 200 amps, so that was good. Just make sure you get all these wires inside. 
You don't want these loose trays. Okay, looks good. Working with these heavy gauge uh, wires, they're a little bit difficult. So when you do uh, crimp them, make sure you get the connector turned the right way for the end use. Okay, on the other side, just need to tighten it up. Once I got the uh, high power battery cables wired in, uh, then I wired in circuit breakers for both the solar and the converter. My converter that came with the RV, uh, yeah, it was only made for wet cells, so uh, it had a equalization mode in it. And that's where the output is changed to 15.7 volts. That's to burn off any sulfur crystals that may be on the battery plates. However, lithium batteries don't need that and the high voltage can actually damage the battery. So while I was at it, I also replaced the 8 gauge wire that came with the uh, converter and replaced it with 6 gauge, uh, some red welding cable. So it was a lot more flexible, easy to run. I just routed it behind the cabinets and uh, under some of the drawers into the compartment. So that was pretty easy. The solar controller presented a little bit of a problem. That unit is attached directly to the 12 volt system. However, I wanted to charge the lithium batteries with solar, so I had to disconnect it and run a new wire to them. This is a very long wire that loops around underneath the chassis. There, down, in this big cable. Cut it off, splice in my six gauge wire. All this wiring took a few days, and yeah, to be honest, I don't bend and flex as much as I used to, so. Crawling around under the rig was not really that much fun. Twelve volt uh, golf cart batteries are still the same. My trickle start is still connected, and it still will uh, maintain the chassis battery just like before. In phase two, I'll remove the uh, wet cell batteries and run everything from lithium batteries. But yeah, I don't have time to do that right now. The lithium batteries are set up to provide power for the 120 volt AC. The inverter will be able to run the microwave, uh, electric water heater, uh, refrigerator on AC, uh, anything that uses 120 volts. I'm not sure if my 2000 watt inverter will be able to run the air conditioning, but I'll be testing that out soon. The lithium batteries will be charged by either the new converter or solar. I don't know if I have enough solar panels to fully charge it, but we'll see when we get using it how much we use every day. Anyway, that's all done and it seems to be working okay. I'm happy so far and it's time to start some testing. See if it'll run my AC, uh, find out how much power I use each day. All that testing will take a little time. Don't know if I can finish before our trip, but anyway, we're gonna be heading out cross country to see my dad in Florida. Then I'll be able to get some real world test results. That's it for today. Okay, time to turn on my lithium power. 